So I know what you guys are thinking. But Styx, if nobody plays these games, then obviously there's a reason behind it, right? Right, obviously. There are any number of reasons behind the failure of a game. The marketing may have been terrible, the developers could be terrible, heck, one of the biggest reasons is the fact that the game itself is probably terrible. Regardless, these are games that I think are missed opportunities, games that we may have overlooked at one point or another. These are no doubt going to be pretty obscure games, so do keep that in mind. Also, I'm not necessarily saying that you need to go ahead and play these games, nor am I saying that these games are released or were released in 2019 or in 2020. So I'm going to go ahead and start this off with Rift. This is probably one of the highest quality free to play traditional MMORPGs out there. The game released initially back in March 2011 as a pay to play title, meaning that you are required to not only purchase the base game, but continue to pay a monthly subscription fee. This was Tryon's response to World of Warcraft, attempting to make a WoW clone to piggyback off of the successful model that WoW had going. While initial reviews were actually generally positive, with Tryon announcing that within a mere few months they had well over over 1 million active subscribers, people just lost interest really quickly. In 2013, the game went free to play and has continued to remain as such to this day. Rift, as I mentioned, is a very traditional MMO. It features a large open world to explore, employs a tab target combat style, and features a faction PvP system, pitting the two factions against one another. Honestly, the game could have ended up being really really good, but ultimately Tryon just being Tryon mismanaged the game and let it die off. Scions of Fate is an MMORPG released back in November 2006. As I'm sure you can believe, the game was incredibly popular in both South Korea and China, having over 100 million registered players within those two regions alone. While it never really met with much in the way of popularity over here in the West, it had its own unique little spin on the genre. Where in most MMOs you quest, you follow through a storyline, and are led from area to area in a linear fashion, in Scions of Fate, quests are scarce, and the primary form of progression is in the form of grinding. This makes it more difficult to level up, especially if you're against hitting the same monster type for hours at a time. Since the game was released what seems like an eternity ago, the tab target combat is noticeably dated. It's slow, it's clunky, and it's difficult to use. This definitely makes grinding a much more arduous process than it needs to be, but I feel like most grindy Eastern MMOs play more or less the same way. Like Rift, Scions of Fate also features a faction system with players being able to choose between two unique factions. But honestly, I don't really think it changes anything. While this isn't really anything special, it does offer kind of like a, a, a cute little unique experience if you're into Eastern games, and especially if you're into grinding, which, you know, if uh, Black Desert Online is anything to go off of, a lot of you do. I kind of have a bit of a history with this game, I will admit. There was some guy when I first started the channel that swore to Gandhi that this was the be all and end all, the pinnacle of MMO perfection. And like, I will be the first to admit, Rapples is a unique game for sure, but let's be real, that is a bit of a stretch of the imagination for any game. But I digress. Rapples was released back in November 2006, and at the time, it was a pretty popular MMO. This is due to the fairly well thought out pet system that allows players to capture and train pretty much every single creature found in game. This was actually really rare to do back at the time, and honestly, to date, it still holds up pretty damn well. It also has well over three different classes, with each base class having various branches at several points throughout the leveling process. The tab target combat is better than some of the MMOs released around its time, but it's still pretty, I don't know, kind, kind of slow and cumbersome. I, I bet though, if you're a fan of monster collecting in games, you'll probably enjoy this. You just have to deal with slower combat and, I don't know, kind of average-ish, but a little dated graphics. Seal Online is probably one of the oldest anime MMOs I have ever played having been released back in July 2003. Yeah, this actually predates World of Warcraft. And you know what? Considering when this game was released, you wouldn't think it'd look nearly as good as it does. This looks better than games that released years after it. And I'm gonna be honest with you all though, like 
Yeah, Sail Online is a very cute looking anime MMO. Yeah, it has some pretty solid tab target combat considering when it was released, and yeah, it is very traditional. However, what stood out to me more than anything else was the fact that the population in game was incredibly large. Like, Fiesta Online is generally considered to be a better looking MMO, but the sheer amount of players in Seal is ridiculously large, significantly more so than in Fiesta. There's plenty in game to explore, although in the way of more like segregated zones, if I recall, but overall, it's just a very basic, very traditional, very densely populated anime MMO, and those are in very short supply these days. Requiem Memento Mori, which I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and refer to purely as Requiem because otherwise I'm gonna be here all day. Now this game was released back in June 2008. This is the only dark, the only gruesome horror themed MMORPG I have ever played. And as a matter of fact, I think this might be the only MMORPG like this in creation. And I have played literally every single MMO that has been released in the last 20 years, or near enough to it anyway. Seriously, although, yeah, the combat is tab target, it's also very, very fast. It's very fluid, and more interestingly, the combat actually allows for you to dismember monsters. As in, you know, like, while you're fighting, you're capable of chopping off their arms, you can decapitate them, you can cut into them, you can watch their guts just flow out everywhere, seeing pools of blood fill up underneath them. This is something that I have never seen done before in an MMO. Requiem is also very large. It features an open world for players to explore. The only issue, I guess, if there is one that I found with the game was the absence of pretty much any other players, which honestly was a little disheartening. I believe I saw maybe two people within like a six hour period. Shia is an MMORPG released back in 2007. It's a pretty solid looking title graphically that features two different factions you can choose between, allowing for faction versus faction PvP. Interestingly, there are also additional game modes when playing. You have the option to play on the normal server, which is where I'm sure most of the player base plays, and then the hardcore server. And that is where I played. The hardcore server is true to its name. It is a permadeath server. As in, if you die, you die. That is it. End of character. Completely deleted, completely wiped from existence. However, due to that, the rewards for pretty much everything are significantly greater. Like, I have never played a permadeath MMO before because honestly, I just couldn't really justify the time investment. The combat is tab target and honestly, it is not half bad. It's a little slow, but I mean, it was released in the mid 2000s, so you can't really complain. Realistically, I have heard a lot of good things about Shia, and I'm always being told to jump back in. There are enough players to warrant that, I'm just not really sure what version of the game they're playing. Despite releasing back in February 2008, Cabal actually looks a little older than games released before it. However, even so, by today's standards, the game has quite a decent population. Unlike pretty much any other game in this list, Cabal is a PvP MMO, having a very large focus on open world PvP. Progress is handled much in the way of the majority of MMOs released around the late 2000s did. It features a pretty linear vertical form of progression, having you run from hub to hub, taking quests, leveling and progressing towards endgame, which is actually over level 200 by the way, yeah. And while that is quite an absurd number, it's not nearly as bad as you'd expect it to be. Surprisingly, even though the game definitely looks more dated than most, the combat feels the complete opposite. While tab target, it is very fast, very fluid, and offers some of the best special effects I've seen in a game from that time. If you're into a heavy grind and endgame, then Cabal's probably something you'll be interested in. You just need to avoid all the gold sellers. Rohan Blood Feud, which I'm gonna go ahead and refer to as Rohan for the same reasons as Requiem, was released back in May 2008. Now, while I have done dedicated videos on every single game in this list, Rohan was perhaps the most interesting to me as over the course of a mere couple hours, I had made it to almost level 60, something that I have never seen in an MMO. Like Cabal, Rohan features an open world PvP system. It seems like games made before, I don't know, like 2012, I guess, were all pretty heavy on that whole open world PvP thing. But one thing that Rohan did differently was introduce a vengeance system, allowing for players to level up exclusively through killing other players. This meant that you weren't actually required to quest. You weren't actually required to kill monsters. You could just go out 
and obtain all the XP you wanted through just killing other people. Well, I'm sure that's likely not really possible anymore due to the lack of a player base, I think it's pretty cool providing new ways to level, ways that are completely out of the ordinary. One thing worth noting is that the game's tab target combat is a little slow. This could make PvP a little less enjoyable. Much like Cabal though, if you like grinding, this might interest you. Savage Hunt was released back in September 2013. It was released under a different name though, Dragon's Prophet. But hey, it's called Savage Hunt now. This is the game that people played before Riders of Icarus, and you can see why. While Riders of Icarus allowed for the capture of pretty much any monster, Savage Hunt allows you to capture one of several hundred different species of dragon. Not only can you tame them, but you can also turn them into mounts and fly around on them, which yeah, there is actual flight in game. Honestly, the game looks pretty damn good visually, and the combat, which is mostly free aim action with some aim assist for range classes, is pretty effective at what it does. Like games released in the mid 2010s, the game is significantly less grindy and instead is much more focused on questing, running instances, and taming your Pokemon, uh, your your dragons. If you're a fan of Riders of Icarus, taming monsters, or well, if you're a fan of either of those, then I recommend giving this a try. It's definitely a unique experience that you won't really find anywhere else except for like Writers of Icarus. I feel like a lot of these games came out around 2004. I promise, I really do. This was not intended and it is completely coincidental. Now, Ran Online is, uh, well, the setting is actually kind of what drove me to the game. I'd watched tons of anime like Tenjo Tenge that dealt with delinquents fighting in school and Ran Online kind of felt like I was essentially playing through one of them. There are several different schools that you can choose from with the majority of the game taking place on the school campus itself. But other than the setting, the game plays much like every other MMO. However, it's also incredibly grindy with a level cap of what, like nearing 300 by this point? Interestingly, the game is quite PvP focused as well with schools going to battle with one another. Although honestly, I never got to experience it myself, sadly. This is one of the only games that allow you to actually play in a school campus and essentially bully the other schools and the other school kids. And <laughs> honestly, that is just kind of funny to me. And yeah, there are 10 MMORPGs that are, you know, unique, that are interesting, but are just generally not really played anymore. But that's just my opinion. My of the genre. What do you guys think though? Let me know down in the comments below and let's talk about it. Anyway guys, that is it for me. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this and I'll see you all next time. Peace. Someday soon I'm gonna make it. Yeah. All hard work's gonna be worth it. Ooh.